Hi and welcome to another episode of Reaper TV. In this week's video, we're going to take a look at the very popular method of sidechain compression. I'm going to show you how we can set it up in Reaper, what it basically does and how easy it is to get that to work inside your sessions. So one of the most popular things you're going to find with sidechain compression is when you're working with bass drums and you're working with bass, especially when you're working with EDM or electronic dance music kind of music, you've got to make space for the kick drum to come through the bass. So what you tend to do is you use sidechain compression that every time that kick drum hits, it lowers the volume or compresses the actual bass track to allow the kick drum to come through. So that's the method we're going to take a look at in this particular session. But there are lots of other reasons why you use sidechain compression. But let's focus on that one for now and I can show you how to set it up and how to use it all. So I've got a session open in front of me and I've just soloed out the bass and the drums. So if we take a listen to that, it's a track I've used before, so let's just take a listen to see what we're working with. So as you can hear, the bass and the drums are the main focus of this. Now there's some guitar parts in there as well, but the bass stays consistent throughout the entire track when the guitars drop out. So we're going to use the kick drum as the trigger, and to do that we need to go and set up some routing first of all. Now there's a couple of ways we can work with this, and this is the quickest and easiest way. I'm going to drag up an instance of recomp onto my bass master track. So this will now affect all of the bass instances, which I've got double tracked. So what we're going to do is we're going to just keep that open. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my kick track. I'm going to come out to the I.O. so we can now set up some routing. Now, normally we drag this up and drop it onto, in this instance, the master track. And if I do that, that'll work. We just need to set some more parameters up. But the quickest and easiest way is if we drag this onto the instance of the compressor that we want to apply on that track. So once I do that, you can see that sets up the send and receive for me. It sets the audio to come out of channels one and two and go in to channel three, four. So if we do this the other way, so let me just delete that a second, and I take the I.O. up from my kick and drop that onto the bass track, you'll see that sets up audio channel 1-2 into 1-2. We would then have to manually go and change that to be 3-4. So that's telling it to come out of this one and go into this one. So we're just using the both tracks. So it does the same thing. It's just one way quicker and easier with one step less. So we've now set that up. There's one other thing we need to do, and that's inside the compressor itself. We need to specify what the detector input. In other words, what's it going to use to detect and trigger the compressor? So you can see the detector input. We're going to come down to that, and we're going to choose auxiliary input left and right. So that will now use the kick drum to trigger the compressor on the bass track. So let's take a look at that now. I'll just start the track up. And you'll see that if I set preview filter, it's going to show us just the kick drum and you'll see the compressor start to kick in. So let's just ramp up the ratio so we've got something on there to work with. Now this is probably a little bit high, but it's just going to give you a visual indicator of what's going on. So let's take a look now. So as you can see there, once we put the threshold down so the compressor and start to kick in and we use the preview filter, you can see that what we're doing is we're listening to the kick drum, which is the trigger. It's showing us every time that triggers the compressor. And once we take off the preview filter, we'll then hear that take effect on the actual bass track itself. So let's do that now. Let's turn this off. I'm going to unmute sorry unsolo the drum tracks we're only going to listen to the bass track now and you should see that every time that kick triggers we'll get the bass level will drop ever so slightly so in other words compressions being applied to that to allow that to be ducked out and let the kick drum come through so let's just listen to only the bass this time And then you can see we're getting every time that kick comes in, it ducks the bass out. Now, obviously, it's a little too much. We've got the compression ratio way too high on there for what we want to do, but it shows you exactly how it's working. So now we can go through and we can reduce the release. Sorry, we can reduce the ratio down to something more realistic. 
probably about six to one, somewhere around there. Obviously, you adjust this to taste. And now when we do that and we put the drum kit back on to a solo, just the bass and the drums, we'll find now that every time that kick kicks, the compressor will be applied to the bass track. It'll drop it down a little bit in level. It'll compress it and allow the kick drum to come through just a little bit clearer. So let's take a listen to that now. Now, obviously, that's a little bit much what we're doing on this, and it works really, really well with dance music where you want that kind of ducking effect to become part of the music itself. But obviously, you know, you go through and you'll adjust the compression ratio, the release, the attack, and so on to get a natural effect and allow that kick drum to shine through. So that's really how easy it is to do sidechain compression with Reaper. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content that's added every single week. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video or anything else covered on the channel, pop those in the comments section below. Until next time, happy mixing.